number 77. What are all concentrations after a mixture that contains a concentration of H2O, which is 1.00 molarity, and a concentration of Cl2O, which equals 1.00 molarity, comes to equilibrium at 25 degrees Celsius? They give me this equation, and then they give me a corresponding Kc value. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to write the balanced equation a little bit bigger. They told us that we had H2O, and that's a gas, plus Cl2O. That's a gas, and this comes to equilibrium. I see the double, the double arrow with two HOCl, and that's also a gas. Let's just make this a little bit more symmetrical. Beautiful. And now let's see what's going on. Are these equilibrium values or not? Well, they said we want to find all the concentrations after a mixture that contains this comes to equilibrium. So it seems like this was the starting amount, and then it was able to come to equilibrium. So these values kind of have to read in between the lines. These are initial values. This is what you started with. This is not equilibrium values. Once they give me initial values or starting values, we have to use an ice table. So all we have to do is just write out ICE. This is just a little nice uh, drawing to get your thoughts organized to get your equilibrium numbers. Now, some professors call it a rice table. The R stands for the reaction, but I don't like to use rice. I just like to use ice. Less letters, the better. Okay, so the I in ice stands for initial. So all of your initial concentrations. In this case, they gave me Kc. C stands for concentration. They gave me concentrations. Remember, these brackets mean molarity or concentration. They gave me a capital M, so we're all good with the units here. So they told me H2O was, point, uh, was one molarity. So I know that H2O is 1.00. When I'm using my ice table, I don't like to put in the units. It just gets a little hairy. So I just double check to make sure that I'm in the right units, and then I'll just put the number in. Cl2O was also one molarity. And now they didn't tell me anything to start off with HOCl. So did I start off with anything of HOCl? No, right? I only started with this. So if we didn't start with anything, that's a zero. Now let's move on to the C line. C stands for change. Always go to your zero guy, right? Remember, if you're starting off with nothing, you can only go up from there. There's no such thing as negative molarity and no such thing as negative pressures. So as soon as you see a side that has a zero, you know that you're going to be going up, aka being a plus. And if the, uh, if the products are increasing, that means that the reactants have to be decreasing. So this would be the minus side. But now how much? Well, we don't know. That's why we use a variable. And the variable of choice always is x, right? But you just got to, you know, play fair or just keep in mind that we have to subtract or add based off of our coefficients. There was no coefficient for H2O and, you know, Cl. 2O, so that means that there was one of these. And then there was a 2 for the HOCl. So when I come over here, this would be minus 1x. But it, it basically is just minus x, right? Minus 1x is the same as x. The same thing here. There's a 1 here, so it would be minus 1x, but it would just be minus x. But now over here, there's a 2, so I would have to say plus 2 x. Now E stands for equilibrium. And that's just the overall sum of what's going on in your initial and your change. Your change is getting to equilibrium. So for H2O, it would be the 1.00 minus x. Same thing for the Cl2O, 1.00 minus x. And then this one, 0 plus 2x, is just 2x. Now we have all of our equilibrium values to plug in into the Kc expression. Remember, the Kc expression is that general formula of this, right? 
Kc just equals concentration of products divided by reactants raised to the coefficients, and only aqueous and gases are allowed. So just double check your states, but we're all good here. We're all gases. So perfect. So now let's just write that formula. Kc equals, we got one product and two reactants, so the concentration of HOCl, and remember, we got to raise it to the coefficients, so there was a 2 here, so I'm just going to square this, and then divided by H2O, that coefficient was a 1, so we can raise it to the first, but we don't have to, and then remember, it's being multiplied by the uh, ClO2. This one also had a 1 coefficient in the front, so I don't have to really raise it uh, to the first, because anything raised to the first is itself. And now we have some of the values. We know that this was 2x. We know that both of these was 1 minus x, right? So 1.00 minus x for both of them. And <clears throat> we know that the Kc value is 0 0.0900. So, let's plug in our numbers. 0 0.0900 equals, let's see, we got 2x squared on the top, and then we have a 1.00 minus x times a 1.00 minus x. Okay. Okay, so let me just bring this over a little bit. Now, some of you might be saying, oh my goodness, right? We got x values, and I can see that this might be an x squared. Are we going to have to do the quadratic formula? Oh, God. The answer is no. <laughs> Thank goodness. There's a trick here, guys, and you can only do this if the values of these are exactly the same. Now, if you have two of exactly the same, basically what that means is that you have this one expression squared, so what I can do is I can get rid of one of them, and just to make it easy on myself, I can just say that I have this squared, right? It was the same thing as saying I had 2 of 1 minus x. And now since both the numerator and the denominator are squared, I can square root the whole thing, right? Remember, the opposite of a square is a square root. So if I square root the whole fraction... That gets rid of this square, and that gets rid of this square. But you got to be fair. If I square root this side, I'm going to square root this. So now let's see. Square root of square root of 0 0.09 is 0 0.3. So I get 0 0.3 equals. Let's see. Now this comes just to be 2x, right? You're just getting rid of the squares. And then this one would be 1.00 minus x. That makes it so much easier. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply, right? So this would be 0.3 times the 1.00 minus x equals 2x. And looks like we just got to do a little bit of algebra here. We got to distribute. So the first one would be 0 0.3, point 0.3 times 1 is 0.3, minus 0.3x, and that equals 2x. Let's get the x's on one side, so I'll plus 0.3x. That gets rid of this. So now we have 0 0.3 equals 2 plus 0.3x is 2.3x. Solve for the x, we want to divide by 2.3. And finally, we come out to our answer. So, let's see, 0.3 divided by 2.3. And let's see, I got three sig figs here. We all have three sig figs, so my answer should have three sig figs, if we even cared about them. <laughs> so this would be, why is that equal sign so, so weird? 0 0.130 molarity. Okay, so that's just the x value, but we have to make sure that we're answering the question, especially if we're doing the ice table. 
The question was, what are all concentrations at equilibrium, basically, right? What are all the concentrations after the mixture comes to equilibrium? So you have to go back to your equilibrium line. So first off, we're going to pause the video. If, if you need to pause the video, I'm just going to get rid of all of this math just for space of the video. So bye. There we go. And now I'm looking at the equilibrium values. So I have concentration of H2O. I had the concentration of Cl2O. <coughs> and I had the concentration of OCl. At equilibrium, the concentration of uh, H2O was 1.00 minus X. The same thing with the Cl2O, 1.00 minus X. And then for HOCl, it was 2x. Plug in that x value. So this would be 1.00 minus the x value, 0 0.130. Same thing here. And then this would be 2 times 0 0.130. And now we're going to get our concentrations. So I'll just put H2O equals Cl2O equals, and then HOCl equals. Okay. So 1 minus 0.3 is 0. Point, we'll do 0. 0.87. That's the molarity. So this is the same thing. And then two times that would be 0 0.260 molarity. And there you go. So H2O concentration is 0.87. Cl2O is the same thing. And then the HOCl was the 0 0.260. And that is your final answer. Whew. Thank you. I really hope that this helped. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if this helped out. If you want to help us out, please press the subscribe button. And I will see you in later lessons. Let's keep rocking and rolling. Okay, see you later. Bye-bye.